Hey, it's Mover Scott from the Imagination Movers, and you're watching a podcast where nostalgia comes alive. It's Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. Roll it. Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. Join Jake and his friends on a journey through pop culture of the past, where they interview professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and so much more. Who will they be chatting with today? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. I'm here at last. Thank you for joining. As always, I'm your host, Jake Duffenbaugh. Me and Dave, the four psychos, Chris Bixby, and Matt Bingo. How you guys doing? Doing good. Doing good. Hello, everybody. How are you, Jake? I'm doing great, Matt. Thank you for asking. Excellent. Who do we have today? Today's guest we have for today, he is a returning guest, joining again for the second time. Uh, yes, of course, uh, he's a musician. A lot of you may know him as uh, being the founding member for our children's group, Imagination Movers. Uh, we'll be discussing lots of recent stuff that we will touch base on later, including their new album that will be uh, be, uh, com- uh, very soon will be coming out, Blue Skies. Uh, yeah. Please welcome back. Yes, I have that too. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool uh please welcome back the amazing scott durbin welcome you guys. back scott thank you so much really appreciate being back uh you guys are wonderful uh interviewers and uh i love what you are doing so i'm a i'm a big supporter thank you really thank appreciate you. that scott. thank you we're delighted to Thanks have you lot. back yeah absolutely so um the kick thing is off really so for those who haven't seen our first interview with you could you tell our audience a little bit about yourself and what you do so I am one fourth of the Imagination Movers. Um, we had a television show on the Disney Channel uh, via Playhouse Disney or Disney Junior um, back in really from 2008 to 2011, 12. And then it's now streamable on Disney Plus. We existed prior to Disney and then have been existing post Disney now coming on like what, 10 plus years or 10 to 12 years, I guess, 12 years now that we're post Disney. Um, and still creating uh, music for families to share and enjoy together and uh, creating music videos and content. Uh, so uh, it's been it's been a gas. It's it's a lot of fun. Very nice. So, very nice. So how does it feel to be back on the podcast since uh, yeah. our first interview with you, like, I guess, two years ago now? That's correct. So ha- have you all had many return guests? We've had a few. Yeah, yeah. we've had a few. Yeah. few. We've had yeah, a few. Yeah, we okay. So a small number, though. And I'm one yeah, of them. Per, yeah, number, yeah, small number, yeah. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I'm excited to be, to be back. I mean, I, like I said before, I mean, I enjoy what y'all do. And I, I the, the guests that you guys get are fantastic. So, you know, kudos to y'all for really uh, creating content that's meaningful for really all ages. And so uh, there's, you know, I'm, and I'm sure that y'all are familiar that, you know, with when it comes to the movers and, and a lot of stuff that we engage with on social media and stuff, we're such um, supporters of creators like yourselves. You know, there's so many consumers out there, and that's great because we need them. But uh, we need the creators because that's really what moves people's imaginations. Uh, oh part yeah. Of the time. So kudos Absolutely. to Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Definitely. Thank you again, Scott. Thank you. So, what was your childhood like, and how did you grow up? So my, my dad was, uh, was in the military. So I was a, you know, quote unquote military brat for the better part of my early years. And so, you know, he was stationed in Thailand. He was stationed, uh, in Germany, he was stationed in San Antonio. And so those early years, we lived in a lot of different places like Thailand and San Antonio and DC. Uh, and then really he, um, he settled down in New Orleans. He got a, a post at a hospital, and that's really kind of where I grew up. So, um, and uh, you know, it was a great, great home. Uh, my dad uh, passed away about ten plus years ago, and so, uh, you know, my mom and my brother live now in Lafayette, the same place where I live, and had a good childhood. My parents were wonderful people, um, and so you know, I was fortunate uh, to have uh, two loving parents and who were concerned with my education and my well-being and so that that proved fruitful as, as I raised my own family that's great so how did kind of your interest in getting to music began for you 
You know, well, it's weird. So like uh, my dad was a big country Western fan, like a Western swing, which is sort of a country Western, but with horns. Um, and so when I was growing up in elementary school, my first instrument was the uh, violin, uh, mainly because my dad wanted me to learn the fiddle, you know, to basically use it, <laughs> not for classical purposes, but for country Western. Uh, and so, you know, I learned um, the fiddle while I was in elementary school. And then when I went to middle school, I picked up the trumpet. Uh, and then by high school, I had changed course and went and I was, uh, I played baseball growing up. So I played four years of varsity uh, high school baseball and one year of college ball. Um, and then post-college, um, I joined a band in New Orleans. And actually I was in a band in high school as well. Um, and, and then started kind of doing, you know, uh, the, the front man kind of uh, thing in college. And then for a while, it sort of stopped uh, until the mover started. And then that's when we sort of kind of revisited our younger days and our, our instruments of choice. And, and I guess it's probably why I played the mandolin, because it's tuned like a, a violin. And that's what I sort of picked up when we were writing songs early. Uh, but now I've, I've branched out to the banjo and the keyboard. So that's sort of like the my, my musical journey. Uh, you know, I played in bands with Smitty. Um, we played on bills with Rich because Rich was in a band. Uh, and so, uh, but we, when we lived in the same neighborhood in New Orleans, that's when we sort of kind of came together as a group. Nice. So were there any musical artists you grew up listening to that kind of inspired you to get into the field? Well, I mean, yeah. So, you know, I love music. Um, you know, obviously it's that it's a, it's a, platform it's a format that really can move you to joy and make you dance and then also be reflective and sad and melancholy and it it just runs the gamut it's such a wonderfully uh you know it, it has a very spiritual-esque quality in that sense um so bands that I kind of grew up with you know I remember one of the first you know I grew up when MTV played music videos which is kind of dating myself so um I remember watching Duran Duran's uh Hungry Like the Wolf video and going, wow, you know, uh, and really a lot of those early Duran Duran videos, music videos were so um, international and global because they were shooting on on location in Sri Lanka and all these different places in Europe with Seven and the Ragged Tiger, New Moon on Monday. And so it really kind of opened up the world, you know, sort of speak. So I remember that song and that video in particular very vividly. Um, you know, I was a huge, I mean, I'm going to name some bands that probably most people won't know, but I was a huge House Martins fan uh, when I was in my high school days. They have a song called Happy Hour. That's a great jam. Uh, and then, of course, really new wave music back in the 80s. New wave is really kind of what I, I hung my hat on, although I went to a predominantly black high school. So I was I was very familiar with like De La Soul and a tribe called Quest and and kind of that native tongue school. So I had a really good education as far as, um, you know, new wave and uh, and early hip hop and rap. Uh, and and they, they all found their, their way in, in the what we do musically speaking, uh, even like the police's early albums like Zenyatta Mandata and that kind of stuff is definitely evident in what you hear when when the music when when, when the movers create music, we all sort of have sort of this kind of nice well that we of inspiration that we follow from the 80s bands in particular and 90s uh, that definitely find their way in our music. Absolutely. Seven and the Ragged Tiger is a great, great album by Duran Duran. It's, it's, it's probably my favorite Duran Duran album. Very good. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of great ones. So uh, you're best known as a founding member of the Imagination Movers. What first gave you the idea to start a children's group? Well, you know, I think, you know, I there there are individuals that that you come into contact with even if it's you know on television or something like that that speak to you and i'm sure y'all can attest to that you know uh, especially with some of the guests that y'all have had and uh, you know fred rogers and captain kangaroo were two oh, yeah. um you know kind of instrumental individuals in children's entertainment and they were live and i think you know i even look now at children's programming and it's just so many cartoons and which is great you know I'm not knocking that um you know I look at like even like Disney Junior and with the exception of like Bluey all of the cartoons look like the same animation style which is kind of redundant in my opinion uh because I'd love to see more people more uh programming push the envelopes of animation 
so that it's not like these giant heads and you know small bodies and uh and an animation that kind of is the same across the board so i'd love to see more um you know more of that if that's going to be the case so but going back you know those those two individuals were very influential i loved what they did i loved what they stood for i love their the way they entertain children and they were kind of on different opposites cuz like captain kangaroo was like a variety show and mr rogers was mu much more personal and really kind of interpersonal relationships and he would he would go and 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 really kind of have teachable moments through the whole episode uh oh, yes. you know whatever the theme is uh and so those two spoke to me and like you know as an in my or, you know my before the mover started i was teaching and um and noticed this lack of creativity and really a lack of live people in children's entertainment and i was like you know what because i was a male and i was teaching um which were you know having male teachers was a uh, something that was in great demand um that male role model and 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 figure was was absent and so we decided to do something about it and uh and that sort of was kind of like the genesis of at least the the idea of like, hey, let's do a local live action kids show. Um, and it was music based. And really, it was because of the movers being friend that we were the ones that formed it. Nice, nice. So, so several years, you know, into the group, now you uh, get the call to do a TV series. How I guess, how are you like first approached to do the uh, so TV we, series? you know, we uh and we were doing everything grassroots. We were essentially a DIY band and we were like, you know, sending our music to everybody who would listen, um, really trying to get anybody to take notice of what we were doing. And because of that, we started really kind of creating, um, you know, a local and a regional following and then a national following because of course, Sirius XM or XM at the time, they were separate before they joined they were the first really kind of national radio for kids uh, that, that, you know, that focused on kids music. And so, you know, people who had that, you know, who had Sirius or XM at the time could listen to us in, in, in Washington state, even though we were from Louisiana. So it was nice to have that national kind of exposure. And then of course we were touring local and regionally. Um, and because of that, we started getting a following and uh, Disney took notice uh, and they came down and they saw us at Jazz Fest, which is a huge music festival in New Orleans that runs two weekends uh, in the spring. And they came and saw us play live. And, you know, we have a song called Thank You that's on um, on Rock-O-Matic. And that really sort of chronicles that that experience, those early days for us. So if you get a chance to listen to that, you'll kind of get an idea and story uh, our our history in song form. But they came and saw us and they were blown away by our ability to kind of make connections with the audience uh, in a musical setting. Uh, and they said, hey, let's do something together. Uh, so that's really how we got on their radar. They came and saw us play. That's really cool. So uh, as we're all started to talk about some recent Movers projects over the past couple of years, the group has released some new EPs. So um, the first one, happy to be here. We... We got a call from uh, Eight Pound Gorilla uh, through Kenny Curtis, who was working with Kids Place Live on Sirius XM. And he was also working with Eight Pound and they were starting really a children's label. And so, you know, at the time we were like, hey, let's see what a label can do for us. Uh, because, you know, we like since since Disney, we've done everything independent. So we did that EP with them and it was a great, a great EP. It's really some great songs are on that. Um, Leaves Fall Down. Robot Breaks Down, Happy, those are on there. And then really uh, My Dog, which is sort of like a pub song, like a UK pub song going into a pub and having a pint. But it's about dogs and it's about it's for kids. So it's um, <laughs> it's really the first pub song for kids about dogs. Um, <laughs> so we were super proud of that, uh, that, that EP, and it did really well. Uh, we were smart enough to kind of know that, hey, you know, having dealt with Disney, you kind of want anything that you create to come back to you to be um, so that you have control over it. So we were able to kind of in that deal very amicably, but shorter than the term, I think they wanted, we, we ended, you know, two after two years, got our masters back so that we could then do it, uh, whatever we wanted to with those songs. Um, as far as coveralls, coveralls was hitting around our 20th anniversary. And we thought, Hey, you know, it would be cool if we could get some other artists to cover our songs 
So a lot of the artists that we we reached out to were friends. You know, we had stories with all of the artists. Um, and whether it be like us being kind of a, a pseudo ska band, like our, if you hear, listen to the theme song, it's very ska influenced. Mm -hmm. And so we reached out to Mustard Plug, who were kind of legendary in the ska, mm -hmm. third wave of ska um, uh, world. And then some bands like uh, Royal Teeth and the Givers that are from our area in the, 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 the deep south or the southern state of Louisiana, um, as well as some other bands like a Canadian band Soul Push. And so we solicited all these in Laundry Day, which is a Brooklyn-based band, uh, indie band, got them to cover it. And then we released coveralls. Uh, even though we didn't play anything, we got them to do it. It was it was almost like we were the manager, like we were a label and we signed these bands to do a single release. Um, and then now, of course, we are uh, we worked on uh, recording Blue uh, Blue Skies, which is something that we've been wanting to do for a while and got 12 songs down. Uh, we're really happy with it. And so we're excited about releasing that. And that'll drop on June 18th in 10 days. You got it. That's right. Jake's holding it up. This is the cover. Uh, Watto76 was an artist uh, that I came across on Instagram. Like I mentioned about following creators, you know, Oh, yeah. I want to encourage people to go and follow musicians and artists and creators. Absolutely. Those, those, they're so inspiring. And so his artwork was really cool. It's really kind of peppered with different like uh, songs that are on the album. You know, we've got the rubber duck that's right, right. there. We've got ice cream sandwich right up here. So yep. all of the, the album has, um, you know, clues to the songs that are on the album. And, uh, and we're so happy with it, you know. Ice Cream Sandwich was the first single that we released, and we're going to release the video on the day we also drop the album. So be on the lookout for that as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Cool. nice. Great. And you probably have seen us in the uh, ice cream costumes. So, yes. Uh, that yeah. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. So that, so vid cool and that video is um, directed by Rich's daughter. So Rich's uh, daughter, Abby, is the direct who directed that one. And she also directed Robot Breaks Down, which is a video from the Happy to Be Here EP that Mad mentioned earlier. So... Nice. I, we're super excited. So thanks for allowing us to kind of share and encourage people to go stream at that first, those first seven days are important. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah. I mean, ice cream sandwich is such a wonderful single. Like, like, like Lily, if you're going to eat like a, like if I would eat like a regular, like ice cream sandwich, just, just, just a rant, just, just out, just, just, you know, just why not? I will think exactly. about that song. Like, 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 exactly. Like, why away? Why not? And that, you know, once that keyboard song. pops up, it's just like puts a smile on your face and you're like, all right, ding, ding, ding. you know, it's, it's a cool yeah. game. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Exactly. So uh, going back to a little bit with uh, Happy to Be Here album, one of the tracks on the album, which is such a wonderful song, is uh, uh, Happy. Uh, what kind of went into writing that song? You know, that was sort of a... a when we were writing that particular EP, I think the two songs that stood out to us were Robot Breaks Down and Leaves Fall Down. So Happy was kind of like, you know, it wasn't like in our forefront, you know, but that was the song that everybody that hit and re really resonated with a lot of people. Um, I worked with Kevin Carlson, who did Mouse on our TV show to do... to Your House to Mouse, do yeah. Yes. Yes. I love Kevin, Kevin. Carlson. Kevin. Kevin's so uh, I was able to direct that video with Kevin Carlson. He did all the puppet work and, and we had this idea and he filmed a lot of the puppet yes, stuff in California. Uh, we did our stuff here. Um, so it was just a wonderful, you know, it, it really is. It was like, um, it's such a, a ha like a happy song, you know, and, and we play that live. We've been playing that live and uh, it's been a fun song. We added a, like a little interactive dance when we do it live with the H A double P Y. And so, um, it's been it's been a wonderful, you know, wonderful surprise for us because that was not like we thought Robot Breaks Down and uh, Leaves Fall Down were like going to be the, the 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 songs that you sort of like, hey, go listen to these. And Happy was like the happy coincidental, you know, or the, the happy surprise for us that it, it just touched so many people. And I think probably coming out of COVID, maybe that was the reason because people wanted to, you know, be happy. Absolutely. So moving on, speaking of concerts, that's a perfect transition, actually. Moving on to some recent concerts that the Movers did. Uh, you guys recently performed at the Family Fall Music Fest in Ohio. What was doing that like? Well, anytime we get to do like festival shows, those are so fun. And, um, 
you know, it, it, we we are definitely an interactive live act. You know, we toilet paper the crowd. We'll do vortex cannons, confetti, ginormous balloons. So uh, there's it's it's really kind of you know we always think of the live experience and the live concert as kind of us and the crowd together to make the experience wonderful instead of the crowd being passive and watching us. You know, it's it's really like hey, let's have fun together. And so you know, you'll have songs where. Two, two of the four guys are on stage and the other two are in the audience, you know, playing their musical instru instruments. But, you know, we break that barrier between artist and fan uh, and, and, and really make it a party um, so that everybody really kind of feels like they've been seen. And uh, so it really is that was, you know, any kind of family fest like that, those kind of events, outdoor events, that was an outdoor event in particular. When you, when you have great weather, you're like, oh, this is perfect. Uh, but of course, we've had our share of like rainy days, you know, and stuff like that. And you just kind of adjust and pivot yeah. and, and try to make the best of those kind of situations. Aren't, aren't festivals the best? Like they're so wacky, but they're also so fun. Yeah. yeah you know, when, I know. when, when we did, um, you know, we did Lollapalooza uh, and that, you know, of course that's a huge fest. Uh, oh, yeah, and, then, huge, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that yeah, was a surprise for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was that? Are the, are the kids, the kids at Palooza? So, you know, they have a kid up, Kids of Palooza t uh, uh, stage. So they actually have a stage for like family artists like, like ourselves to play. Um, now, of course, when we did our set, we had fans your age come and, and really be a part of that situation. So we had like 400 people at that particular concert. And they were, it was just a wonderful thing because I think, you know, it speaks to why you have your show and that's that happy nostalgia show and for us it was kind of like full circle for these people who grew up with the show to mm -hmm. see us again see us live really kind of like oh wow they're really they they know how to play music and they play live and they interact with us and and you know there were countless um individuals after the show who said it was a, a tons of fun but it was um it was so wholesome and and it really kind of spoke to that kind of full circle experience of them being four years old and now being 19 and and appreciating what we bring to the table uh, entertainment wise. And so it was really kind of nice. So a beat of fall fest is great. It's another family festival. Um, you know, there's a lot of, obviously a lot, a lot of local people because we're from the area. Um, you know, Vita is not too far from New Orleans. And so we get a, a, a nice hometown crowd at those kinds of shows. And a lot of times for those kinds of shows, we'll like, we'll definitely play around with the set list because there are certain songs like in our set list that we kind of alter in and are, are we, um, you know, we bring in and bring out depending on how long we've been playing it. So we try to keep it as fresh as we can. Now they're like evergreen songs like Brainstorming and the theme song and Jump Up that um, that, yes. that are always Amazing. in every show. Classics. Yeah. Um, but there's songs like, you know, and like shakeable use in every show that we do. Now there's songs like seven days a week and Nina or something like that, that come in and out of our set, depending on how long we've been playing them. So like, we're going to bring Nina back into the set. Um, and then of course we play new songs. So like ice cream sandwich, we now play live, we play happy live. Um, so it's really been, you know, the beat of fall fest allows us to kind of experiment sometimes because they're local. Uh, homegrown fans that come to those kinds of shows but they they you know it's it's funny because all of those um shows have unique characteristics that are uh that are wonderfully uh personal to that 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 area whether that city or state or region uh and it just makes it a unique experience for everybody including you know us in particular nice nice so you also got to perform at Festival International de Louisiane. What was that like? That is that was that was a blast. That that's uh that was just a fantastic event. Um, you know, I'm from Lafayette, so that's that's in my city, and it's the largest free international festival uh in the United States. And so, you know, you don't have to pay to go there. I mean, of course, if you're getting drinks or food, you do, but it's just this wonderful. Um, and it, it's very Francophile because Lafayette is a, there's a strong uh, Cajun culture, which is, uh, you know, the Acadianas from uh, Canada that have gone, uh, that came down to settle in our area. There's a lot of French speaking artists. Uh, and if it's not a French speaking artist, it's generally a Louisiana artist. 
Uh, so we got to play. We I think this is our third time playing Fest International, but it's been a long time since we had played. And um, again, the, the crowd was a wonderful mix of all ages. There were kids who read, who discovered us now on Disney Plus that are like five, seven, nine. And then of course, all those kids who grew up with us that are your age. And it was wonderful. We had a huge crowd and got to play some of our covers that we do strategically. So we like to play music for everybody. And that includes a cover here and there for the adults uh, so that they kind of take away some of their you know, nostalgia uh, as well, like playing a you know, Blink-182 song or something like that. Nice, nice. So as we're about to wrap this up here, so the last question that Matt's about to ask, we ask our guest at the end. Go ahead, Matt. Thank you, Chris. If you folks didn't catch it at the beginning, this podcast is called Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. When you think of nostalgia, what do you think of? Or in your own words, how do you define the word nostalgia? Well, I think... Um... You know, it's definitely um, those those happy and positive memories that can be uh, brought back, you know, in a second. Uh, it's like one of those things that I kind of uh, that, that I parallel. It's like um, there are certain smells and certain tastes that immediately or even a song that bring you right back into a memory. Oh, and yeah. for me, I think nostalgia, that happy nostalgia is it really can run the gambit. Um, it can be a taste of a, a, a bite of food, or it can be a song that you hear, it could be a television show, but it brings you back to that moment. And that moment is so real, uh, even though time has passed that you can take away like the wonderful positive feelings, the the comfort, you know, the, the whatever, whatever that generated for you. Um, that's sort of kind of where I feel like nostalgia, happy nostalgia hits me. It's like, like going back to when we talked about uh, Duran Duran's video, you know, it's like, I can remember that moment. It becomes real in my head, even though it's been, you know, years since I, I first saw it. And so I think those are the things that really kind of like um, are, are benchmarks and uh, through our lives, these happy nostalgic moments that we can kind of conjure up uh, and through our senses to, to really kind of put a smile back on our face if we're feeling low or whatever. Nice. Great words to send on. Well, yes, uh, Scott, enjoy the rest of your day. Um, yeah, this was great fun getting to talk to you again and talk about yes. some yes, new uh, Movers projects. And so cannot, do it. So thanks again, wait, Scott, for doing yeah, this. And cannot wait what's next in store for the Movers. Even after the album. Um, yes. You know, uh, we'll probably have more shows. And, yeah, and more shows, on, more music. Know? I mean, we've been we've been talking about doing like a holiday album, like a Christmas album soon. So Ooh. we do like a Christmas album. Nice. That'd be great. That'd be cool. Cool. Christmas yeah. albums are always fun. They yes. are. Oh, yes. Yes. See some of you in the guys that just cover like some of the famous, you know, well, that's it. Christmas that's it. songs yeah. or something. Pretty much. You know? that's, yeah. that's what Christmas that'd be, that's that'd be so, it. That'd be so yeah. cool if that's going to be on yeah. the ground. So that'd, that'd be cool. awesome. Yeah. Well, enjoy the rest of your day, Scott. Thank you, guys. Y'all take care and be Scott. well. Thank you. You right. too. You too. Likewise. Take care. Thanks, Scott. Again. Bye. Bye. It's goodbye from us as well. We absolutely enjoyed our time having Scott Durbin back on the show. Um, links to his social media and uh, Imagination Movers social media will be in the description down below, as well as links to where you can uh, purchase a copy of the Blue Skies album. But it's goodbye yeah. from us yes. as well. Yes, there you go. It's goodbye from us as well. Keep on the yeah. lookout for more wonderful interviews coming your way. As always, Jake, take us home. What do we say? Keep the nostalgia alive. Take care, everyone. See you next time. Take care. Bye. 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 If you'd like to stream the Imagination Movers brand new album, Blue Skies, it is available wherever you stream your favorite music. And if you'd like to purchase a physical copy autographed by the Movers themselves, be sure to note that there are limited copies available. If you'd like to purchase one, please visit imaginationmovers.bandcamp.com slash albums slash blue skies. Once again, that's the Imagination Movers brand new album, Blue Skies, available from Imagination Movers LLC and Astronaut Walk Records. Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Be sure to follow Jake and the Happy Nostalgia team on social media, check out our website, and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye-bye.